Welcome back to another segment of Zero Takedown Ghost. I'm Chris Gossman, and this time we're coming straight away from the DRB hideout to the warehouse, factory, whatever you want to call it. It's the place where uh, a signal has been traced. The leak that poor Pritchard has been trying to plug because he's so friggin' inept. Pritchard. You got coordinates on that factory yet? I was only able to pinpoint an approximate area, Jensen. So scout around and look for anything unusual. I'll keep monitoring the frequency in case it suddenly goes active. Yo. What's good, so man? Thankfully, these guys are actually more helpful than Pritchard is. Toys? I can make you a good deal. I could use some information. I you know, tell one you some shit for really sure. important piece of information, what you which is you guys seen anything suspicious uh, going down around snipers here? Suspicious on this ain't map. The word, so man. you need to be kind of careful types about of that. Caravans moving in and out of here. Yeah, no doubt. They got a patrol unit in the courtyard, and they got snipers on the roof and shit. Thing snipers is, on the roof, I eh? I saw some government vans walking around, heading. so it looks like they'd be moving the party somewhere else and making way for the feds once again. Thanks. All good. So now it's time to really get this thing rolling. A little overview of where we're headed. And I have to say, this factory level is uh, one of my favorites so far. The beginning part's a little bit, a little bit easy, but uh, there's one room that was probably my favorite area so far in the game in terms of stealth. So I really enjoyed it. Lots of traps and whatnot. So a little bit of an overview here. I won't show the entire no cutscene. But we got the uh, big bad guys. And there's Barrett. I'll make the call. Malik, get out of sight. Now. Why? What's going on? They're here. The mercs who killed Megan and her team. Fuck. I'm going in. I'm deciding which side of the door I want to be on to be able to take a peek. There are a couple of different ways to get in here. I choose uh, what I think is the most stealthy route. Uh, it's really very little risk of being spotted. Now, I'm using one thing to my advantage, which is if you're quick enough, you can do SWAT turns here. You gotta make sure one guy is not facing the correct direction. There we go. So it's clear enough. And one guy turns around. I almost got spotted there. I was actually pretty close. Uh, it's very useful to have the be able to pick up heavy objects by this point because uh, that is certainly a great path to take. Allows you to bypass all these guards. This big box on my left. So I'm just waiting for this guard to turn and walk so I can move over and get behind the box. There's another guard that uh, potentially could path back. Now I'm not exactly sure that you know the best place to be. I wanted to make sure that he couldn't like peek in here and spot me so he's certainly looking in this direction. So I didn't want to give him any uh, excuses. I'm going to kind of wait him out. I know that he was about to turn around. I didn't want to uh, risk getting spotted, although I think I probably could have gone there. But, just make my way through. And I'm trying to make sure this guy won't see me. So I uh, wait for him to turn, and away I go. So it's time to hack a gate, and... You're pretty much into the complex at this point. I mean, it's a great route to take if you're just trying to not be spotted. Maybe if you're having a hard time with stealth. Definitely take this. Now, you notice I have the code, but I'm going to hack it anyway because uh, might as well get the XP. Might as well get the stop worms and the nukes. And notice that I'm keeping that 5 folder. And um, I'm waiting till I get all the way down until I'm one move away to be able to complete the hack. Now I get the five, just in case. And had I been detected earlier, I would have immediately started to get the five. But anyway, done and done. Easy stuff. 
I don't think I even use those stop worms or nukes, really. Got a little stash here, you can grab some stuff. Shotgun, frag grenade, little, little shop, but of course my inventory is full because I haven't gone and sold anything in ages. I was hoping I could sell to the guy that tries to sell you stuff, but you can only buy at his location, so just outside. So, I don't think there's really anything up here that can spot you. I was sort of doing a little cursory check and I didn't see anything. Um, I also don't plan on getting the radar extension. I just don't like it. I I almost wish that I could play the game without the radar. I want to uh, be able to toggle that. So I don't know if the developers happen to watch this at all, but um, if there is a way for us to A, turn off the radar completely, and B, if we can maybe make it so that the guards, like there's a difficulty setting like Nightmare or something, um, realistic nightmare of... You know, stealth Newbury, where they would pretty much notice anything that was out of order, or at the very least have really fine high sight. Because, like at this point, I spent all this time kind of waiting for this guard at the far end with a sniper rifle, thinking that you know he probably has maybe some goggles on or something like that, where I might you know be spotted at a far range. So I'm you know trying to be very cautious, but I really think he has sort of a normal sight range, to be honest, which is. A little saddening, um, but I mean, I, as much as I, I maybe pine for greater difficulty, I don't want to give the impression that I'm not having fun. I mean, this game is is fun. Idas has done an amazing job of creating a game that I have. I mean, I've already put more than forty hours into it, uh, easy, and I can imagine myself getting up to eighty hours by the time I'm done with all the the playthroughs I want to do. So. I mean, it really is an incredible game, and um, I, I guess I'm always just looking for you know ways to improve. So you know, maybe if there's a expansion pack or Deus Ex Four or however you want to call it, you know, however it's going to be named. And I'm like, wait a minute, oh, I never saw that before. I just noticed this uh, pathways. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go check this out. Um, yeah, a little bit more difficulty, and I'll be one hell of a happy camper. I, I'm like, oh, wow, okay, I'm going to figure out where this is on my next playthrough. So, yeah, it's stuff like that, you know, with I'm just randomly following a path that I've, you know, noticed to be kind of a quick and easy way into the objective, and I'm, like, noticing all these other great spin-off paths where I'm actually really curious what's in that room. I'm going to go check it out, so... Thank you again for making such an incredible game. Uh, the first time I went through, I came out... Um, again, it was my takedown playthrough, so I actually knocked out the sniper. And from his perch, you get this great overview of the room. And I'm curious to see if I can make it through that room... Uh, ...pretty much undetected while leaving the sniper alive but maybe giving myself the ability to knock out people if I felt so inclined. Richard, patch me to Seraph. We may have a problem here. Wonderful. Adam, talk to me. This factory, where the hacker's signal originated, it's got FEMA signs all over it. I think it's some kind of internment camp. FEMA? That's impossible. Half of our contracts are government issue. I know, but the soldiers who attacked us are here. And from the looks of it, they've got access to some pretty impressive equipment. I better make some calls. Find out who's given the orders and get back to me. All right. So we're into the compound. There's our ghost. There's our smooth operator for that segment. Good times. This is one hell of a long elevator ride. I mean, seriously. How they did, how did they not spot me? That's what I want to know. Because there's no cover in here. I'm just sitting here. Like, come on, somebody. Somebody, look. All right, so you got a couple things to watch out for. Um, you'll notice up top there are a couple of guards. You don't really have to worry about them too much, but they are snipers, I think. And so you have to be a little bit cautious. 
And what's really important is these guys are sitting there fighting over the controls for a few seconds. That gives you a chance to at least get into the room without being detected. There is one bot. This is, I think, maybe the first big box bot or whatever they're calling it uh, that you encounter. And uh, I kind of love the animation. It reminded me of sort of the stop animation from the at at or whatever it was from Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. Just SWAT turn your way to victory here and you do have to be a little bit cautious about where you stop. Um, especially this guard on the right platform. Since he's elevated, he does tend to spot you if you're hugging a corner that's facing him. So you gotta be a little bit careful about that. That's why I move back a little bit like this. And then this guy will walk right past me. Waiting for the bot as well. So you have these three things to kind of worry about. There's also a couple of guards up on the catwalks, but at this position they can't see you. So waiting for this guy and this guy. It looks pretty good. And away I go. So Again, this is another place where you gotta be careful about timing your turns. Because they do kind of check the obvious SWAT turn points pretty off, uh, frequently. So, again, I kind of like getting through this room. This was pretty fun. Although I wish it was a little bit more challenging where SWAT turns weren't quite as on hand for me. A little bit of a wait. I was checking out. That's the, uh, the southern exit. That's what I'm headed for. Make note of the vent passageways below. I'm using the radar here to make sure that I can get through. I knew that the platform would block me, give me cover from the guard on the, guard on the far end. And now it's just a matter of getting to the doorway. So I have to wait for this one guard that just turned around. Of course, the bot is going to come back soon, so I want to make sure that that doesn't spot me. This guy looks pretty much exactly where I want to go, so I have to wait him out. And I can hear the bot is about to come back, so I need to hightail it. The door closes automatically. I don't need to worry about that. And I'm through. So, okay, this is what I mean by I wish guards would path a little bit farther. They seem to always stop in front of cover. Like, okay, there's one piece of cover behind me. All right, I would love it if this guard, that's as soon as he's done with this conversation, that he would come out and check beyond the box that I'm hiding behind. So that I would have to realize this as as I'm playing and hop back to the yellow box that's behind me in order to be in cover. But instead, this guy will walk pretty much two paces in front of me and stop. And it's just, oh, I'm just like, oh, come on, it's a little bit more, you know, keep me on my toes a little bit more and I will be one hell of a happy camper. So close. So I'm not sure if they would hear me climbing up the ladder, that's why I'm giving this guy a few paces before I decide to make my decision to go. And again, I'm showing one of the easier stealth routes. Um, I might I might go through and just do main missions with some of the more difficult routes um, once I finish this playthrough, but it'll, it'll be quite some time before I do that. I mean, just looking at the map, I mean, taking this route, I'm skipping so much stuff that I kind of can't wait to get down in there and uh, just see what kind of craziness ensues in terms of a stealth walkthrough. So here we have a little bit of an uh, armory that you can break into. So, hack into the security hub. There's one camera connected to it, which is kind of pointless, but what are you going to do? Access 
Request granted. This next section of, of this map is one of my favorites. Because this room alone that I'm about to enter, uh, I've tried a couple of different routes so far, in addition to the one that, that I'm about to perform. And there's a camera I shut down. So I can walk in and take all this stuff, yay. Um, you don't need to see me fiddle with my inventory because I've been full on inventory for a while. So I'm going to go turn the camera back on, close the door again, try to keep things as I left them. There we go. So yeah, pretty much they were robbed. What can you do? I left a gun on the floor. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. The next room after this one. I know which way I want to head out of this room. There are some huge boxes in this room. I'm trying to kind of show an overview. My idea was to be talking about, and if you take a look at the map, I'm heading for the staircase in the far end, and I'll be going down that in order to reach the uh, objective. So, anyway, that aside, there's a weapons cache there. You can use these boxes if you really want to hack this terminal. Use these the, the taller boxes and just uh, put them on your sides, and then you can just sit there and hack away, I think, without the guards on either side noticing you. Otherwise, they will see you as you try to hack. So, I'm trying to being a little bit cautious as I open the door, because there's that, that guard there. I want to make sure he was pathing away from me on the far end. Right now, the now. most important thing here are the cameras. You need to be looking at the two cameras, especially the one that's actually on the level below you, because it will spot you. Uh, if you try to SWAT turn and it's looking at you. So, that's why I'm, uh, I'll probably cut some footage here, I think. Yeah. Waiting for this guard to path away. And you can also see there's, uh, guards on the middle level. You gotta watch out for them, too. One guy's coming upstairs. Now I'm waiting for the camera. Waiting for the camera. And it's time to go. So now we got two guards upstairs, plus this guy with the big, huge, beautiful gun. Cut some footage. Don't have to wait for him to path back. Kind of want to get my hands on that gun, just to you know. Yeah, when, when I go Rambo, it's going to be seriously Rambo. So, good times. So again, now uh, the camera on this level really isn't that much of a factor. Ooh, that guy almost spotted me. <laughs> that was really close. The camera really isn't a factor until you get up near the crates um, that are over on, uh, I guess, ahead of me and on the right. Now, you got a couple of guards to worry about. You got this one that's closest to me, and I'm going to cut some footage so you don't have to wait for the path back. But there's another guard on the uh, catwalk in the center that's currently looking away from me. Yeah, that guy there. Um, he will spot you if you don't time your movements just right. So, again, I just skirt around all kinds of guards, and then I've got one more issue here, which is the camera's panning back, and I've got the one guard that I just passed closest to that's about to come up here and have a little uh, peekaboo. I got lucky here that the guard to my right has turned away. I'm waiting for the camera, and I can go right now. And I'm through. So that, I, I, I absolutely loved that room. Getting through that room, I kind of wish every room was that difficult. Um, and that interesting. I mean, the number of ways you could get in there and get out of there is ridiculously uh, complex. So, amazing, amazing stuff in this game. So, I love it. I love it. Jensen, that frequency we track just got a burst of activity. I think these guys might be pulling out. Yeah, I've kind of been getting that feeling. Any idea who's running the show? They're using some kind of code. But from what I can gather, the guy giving the orders is still a level below you. Nice job, Richard. I'll find him. So if you still need weapons, uh, even though you do get all the weapons you'd ever want at the boss fight itself, if you still want some weapons, there's... Um, if you go through the doorway that I walked away from when I first entered this area, there's some FEMA guys that are actually friendly to you. Uh, and as long as you kind of play the part, they won't set off any alarms or anything like that. And, uh, and then you can... You basically say something about wanting to retrieve your stuff. And uh, 
You have to make sure that I, I think you have to have a door code in order to get past them, and otherwise they will call your bluff and be very upset with you. So some additional arsenal that you can add. But as I said, you get all the weapons you need Access granted. at the uh, boss fight, so no big deal. Uh, really, this is the most pointless security terminal I've ever seen in my life. It's the camera I've already passed that I could easily walk... I don't know why my gun came out there. I could walk right past it, but at least in this room, there's one good thing. You know what the good thing is? There's a weapon upgrade back here. So that's like the only reason to come into this room, to be honest. Don't even bother other than getting the hacking points. I'm just, I'm just, at this point, I'm like, do I even want to turn this camera back on? It's just, it's such a pointless camera. I'm mad at the camera being pointless, so... Eh, what are you going to do? Uh, in here, you have, I think, a credit chip that I totally ignore, even though I'm staring right at it right there. I, I don't know why I didn't pick it up, but I'm looking for the medical hypostim thing. That's, that was pretty much, I apparently had blinders on for that hypo stim. So, alright, I guess we'll go turn the damn camera back on. Stupid camera. I don't like you. So, leave things as we left it, except for the boxes, but who really notices around here? And... We're pretty much at the part where stealth doesn't matter anymore, if I recall correctly. I think at this point it's just uh, kind of silly. You enter a big dark room and I'm like, ooh, a big dark room. Well, sadly, uh, stealth is over. So... Let's just jump around and be silly. No. When in doubt, we're sad. Strafe jump. I'm pretending that there might be someone looking through that window, but I know there isn't. Sad but true. So, uh... It's a sort of a edited version of the boss fight. There's so many tutorials on this thing I didn't even worry about uh, doing a full thing. I just sort of did the highlights. What I wanted to show was that you can do it in a pretty much a, a sneaky way where other than the initial uh, exchange of fire I wanted to have him never be able to pick up where I was again. So he never gets a clear shot at me again. So I got my ghost bonus right at the start of this. Blow that up. I actually shot him in the crotch initially. Because, you know, that's fun. So, grab a red barrel. They are ridiculously powerful against him. Hit him in the face. Now, you gotta be watching out, though, because the red barrels, they have an enormous blast radius. And if he throws his triple grenade shot, I mean, you can get friggin' owned if you're standing next to one. So, notice that he has no idea where I am now. And this is really important to me, so... Um, you'll notice that in each of these little cuts, he's like totally clueless. And uh, I basically, I, I do run whenever he tosses a nade. I'm thinking about that barrel. And so I just did a bank shot crack grenade. And I get a nice little uh, double tap there. The nades, time to stun him. And the gas is also really good at immobilizing him, so just do that. And uh, wait until he's coughing. I'm gonna shoot him in the face again. A stun gun. I mean, it's just, it's so nice how you can just choose. There's a nice another nade for you. And now he's lost me again. He's gonna toss nades though. Time to go. Yeah, so he's lost me again. Oftentimes I've wondered if maybe his uh, nade spam is actually killing himself. It didn't seem like I did that much damage to him. So he's still looking for me. 
Again, I'm trying to basically only take shots when he absolutely has no clue where I am. Because that's, that's what's fun, honestly. So time to go bowling. Enjoy. So there's all kinds of ways to take him down. I chose uh, try to be somewhat stealthy even in, in that. It takes a lot longer. If you want to, you can sit there and stun him with Don't gas and barrels and the stun gun, and he'll ass. literally never move. Jensen, but what's going on down there? It's kind of boring. Those soldiers so. just sticks out like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> they see you. No, I was flying dark and So that's the warehouse, high. and uh, right? I guess I'll finally run around and pick up some stuff. Uh, I'll show you if you ever you enter first. this fight without Get any weapons. I'll pick you up just there. come to these uh, these two rooms that are diagonally across from each other on the wings of the main room, and there's also a weapon uh, ammo restock on one of these crates out here somewhere. I uh, just passed it on my left. Um, there's all kinds of stuff, so you know there's no reason. I think there's like four nades or something. There's more than you need to kill him. So you can enter this fight with an empty inventory and still win it. So, uh, again, nice job by Idas for not punishing people who like to play stealth and not have anything but a stun gun in their arsenal. Uh, if you're like me, you're just itching to sell your weapons every chance you get. So I'm looking to see if I maybe pass anything that I could have picked up and stolen because I am a klepto in this game. I figure at this point, since I blew up an entire uh, room and I left a dead guy, who cares about closing a door? It's time to leave. You ready to get out of here, Jensen? Yeah, take us back to Sarah. And we're through. So soon, yeah, that concludes me. yet another Zero Takedown Earth Ghost. Hold on. Um, really enjoyed it. I'll probably do some, maybe some alternate pathways with some some future videos, but I'm going to continue with just the basic game tutorial. Uh, over the next couple of installments, so enjoy.